I work on the River Murray as part of the River Murray Operations Group. Uh, we're the group who are responsible to, to regulate the river to get the water to where people want it on any given day. It's a big part of the Riverland's lifeblood for horticulture and tourism and sport and recreation, so it's great to be involved in something really important. The River Murray starts in the, the Snowy Mountains in Victoria and it makes its way down towards South Australia and then makes its way to the ocean down at uh, Galwa. We operate in three states and we, we encompass some really dry arid areas of Lake Victoria all the way down to the barrages and the Coorong. So, so you go from really harsh outback country to storm boy country. We see a vast array of change along the river. The flora and fauna is, is fantastic. You know, your typical beautiful large river red gums dominate the upper reaches of the river. Uh, and the river is faster and, and quite smaller in those locations. You know, Lock 7, the river is probably about 60 metres wide. Lock 1, it's 150 metres wide. So it's vastly different river. And so is the, the local environment that goes with it. Not only does the, the flora change, but also the fauna changes. We go from you know, eastern and western red greys in, in this area of the, of the river to the, the red kangaroos up in the far reaches of the area, down to the bottom end of the Murray Mouth where we see an abundance of pelicans at different times of the year. I think one of the most interesting things that I find operating the river is the complexity of how the river is operated and managed and what goes in behind the scenes just to get water to flow downhill. There's lots of moving parts and pieces in the puzzle that make the water flow the way it does down the river. The river system over the last few years has undergone a substantial change. 15 years ago, most of the water in the river was used by consumptive users in farms, so citrus and, and grapes and all that type of work. Over the last 10 to 15 years, the Commonwealth has purchased a lot of water through Commonwealth buybacks. So what we see now on most days is that most of the water in the river is actually environmental water. And on any given afternoon, we're undertaking multiple activities with that water. Today, we've got water coming in through the Darling system. That's being used there for environmental purposes to, to flush the water. That'll come down into South Australia. We'll use that for fish breeding habitat purposes. We'll increase the velocity of water in certain pools. It'll then continue through further down It'll be high in nutrient loads, and that's pretty much what fish like and microinvertebrates. So it'll be then used in other locations. We're here today in the Lock 4 pool. So we'll probably use that water and push it out into the Catarapco system, which is full of small little rivulets, which will then also help in other ways on the floodplain as well. So the water is used in multiple ways in multiple locations. The more times we can use the water, the better it is for everybody. South Australia has a guaranteed entitlement that's 1,850 gig per year and that's broken up into human critical needs, irrigation, evaporation and transfer losses. As a water supplier we use the, the actual water inside the locks and weirs so we, we go from lock one through to lock six in South Australia and there's a certain amount of water in each of those pools. In most of those pools ASA Water operates a town offtake so we have a pump that takes up mostly straight away into a water treatment plant but not always and so it goes into a water treatment plant comes out then as potable drinking supply and then in some of those places like Morgan Wyala for example we then pick it up through the treatment plant and then pump it all the way over to Wyala you know multiple hundreds of kilometers away through a very large pipe which starts not quite a meter in diameter and ends up in a very small little pipe by the time it gets to Wyala. At Murray Bridge we have a couple of our major pump stations and from there we pump the water into Mount Bold which allows the water quality to get better as it spends a bit more time actually in the reservoir. We then go from Mount Bold into our Happy Valley treatment plant which then goes from the treatment plant through a process and then out into the wider network through multiple pipes into people's homes.